Okay, I'm live, everybody. Um, back again. I was really uh, touched by some of your comments yesterday. I'm sorry that we had so many people here to join us. Um, I'm going to spend the first couple minutes just working on um, some administrative stuff, just getting ready, because I do have an agenda. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, and the agenda is fun and a chance for you guys to talk and be a part of the show. I, I want to hear from you. And I got some cool stuff to show you again today. Um, a lot of um, rock and roll stuff, and I got some magic for you as well. Um, I brought some memorabilia from one of my favorite magicians of all time. You're going to find out a little bit more about that. And um, just give me a second to get everybody in, and I'm going to get back to what we are doing here. All right. Very cool. All right. Give me a moment, please, and I will get everything prepared. Just make sure we are preparing. This looks like one of those silent streams, but I promise them I will not be silent. Silent no more. It's time to speak out and tell us how you really feel. All right. Well, I brought a few um, artifacts with me. I've got um, this really cool Kiss CD. I remember before I got the album, I had a sticker of this on one of my uh, cabinets. I think it was out in the garage, like one of those metal cabinets. And I just stared at it for hours. I thought it was so cool how a rock band could also be comic book characters. And they do have a lot of comic books. Um, Kiss was able to put out a, a lot of series of successful comics. The first one, I think, was in the mid-70s. And they went out and took a vial of blood from each one of them and they poured it into the uh, printer mix. Now, I don't think you could do that today. There would be too many questions about contagions and bloodborne pathogens. But um, it was very <laughs> different. Anyway, Kiss. This one is probably one of the best albums. It's really a, a work of art. You know, the cover... Uh, musically, it's a great album as well, and it was really kind of what set Kiss into superstardom back in the late 1970s. All right, um, here's another album. I think it was a follow-up to Destroyer, and it's called Rock and Roll Over. <laughs> like Kiss, and had all their different characters and powers. Really interesting stuff there. All right, as we wait for our first visitor, I'm going to show you a couple other things I just pulled from my collection. Um, I don't know what it is about this movie. Um, it's called Breathless by Richard Gere. It was made in the early 1980s. A lot of it was filmed, most of it was filmed in Los Angeles. Uh, there was a scene downtown by the Bonaventure Hotel. Um, there was UCLA was covered, I remember, Westwood. And, hey, it's Metal Music Maniac, classic albums. There you go. Anyway, there was an original movie called Breathless. And I think it was done by a French director, probably back in the 50s or 60s. And they used the music of Jerry Lee Lewis. That's right. And um, this character is obsessed with Jerry Lee Lewis music and also obsessed with the Silver Surfer, the comic book character. Wow, what an interesting movie. It's a very twisted love story and tale of an outlaw who just idolized Jerry Lee Lewis. And I can I don't know what it is about this movie, but I could just watch it over and over and over again. <laughs> the music is awesome and Richard Gere does a great job playing this really off the wall gonzo idealistic drifter that's just looking for pure true love in the weirdest places. 
Um, anyway, uh, yeah, Jean-Luc Godard had an original masterpiece with Breathless. I haven't seen that one. But I'm just still stuck on the remake here. I don't think it got great reviews, but uh, DJ Jerry gives it a thumbs up. You know, I don't. I mean, I think it got mixed reviews or something like that. But I don't know. Some some reason I just really connected. It's like an odyssey just watching this guy's life uh, come come apart and uh, how he deals with uh, all these unfortunate situations and still trying to find true love up until the very last second of the movie. Anyway, um, Richard Gere. This is VHS, by the way, and um, I still kept my um, VCR. They're kind of expensive now if you want to buy them because there's some movies that they have never released on DVD. And believe it or not, I did get requests for VHS. Some of my VHS have sold for as high as $70, $80, $90 if you have the right title. So don't, don't be too hasty to you know get rid of all your VHS some of them have great value this one I'm I don't think it's very valuable because it has been released on DVD but as far as uh, entertainment value yeah way up there really cool movie all right um, remember this guy Mick Jagger there's a lot been written on him look about Mick Jagger I think I read the whole thing it was very interesting told his whole life. I took it with me to Brazil. DJ Salini's from Brazil. Good morning, Vietnam is a true classic. Yeah, that was the true story of, um, forget his name, but um, it was really well done by Robin Williams. I love when they let Robin Williams loose, you know, in movies. And sometimes they constrict him too much to a, one role. I think that movie, he was able to become this really... Um, outgoing gonzo DJ for the army. Good morning, Vietnam. I, I, I love that soundtrack. It has so many great songs and you get to hear Robin Williams from the movie like introduce each song or most of the songs. So it's pretty cool. It's one of the few soundtracks that actually include, you know, dialogue from the movie. Uh, thank you for coming, Metal Music Maniac. Um, as we uh, start up another programming day here, um, I've got a, I've got a lot. Of, I, I do collect books too. I'm very, 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 I wish I had more time to read them, but um, this is a nice book that Jimi Hendrix. Remember when they were releasing these? They would call them CD book collections. They would be the same size of your CDs, so you could store them, I guess, in the same types of storage facilities or whatever. But I used to get a whole bunch of these, and then some of them have CDs with them where they go through the history of these different artists. But, you know, this one was really nice. You know, a lot of information, a lot of, a lot of cool photos that you don't always see. And uh, undeniably one of Rock's most influential figures, the guitar virtuoso Jimmy Hendrix. Yeah, he was, he really changed the way people play guitar. Um, forever. This, with this guy packed in the three or four years is incredible. And all those unreleased recordings that would be finding were amazing as well. He just must have recorded everything, you know, or somebody recorded it. Anyway, um, Led Zeppelin, another one of my top ten favorite rock groups of all time. This one is also a CD book. It has some really cool photos of the band. You know, these giants only walked the earth as Led Zeppelin for 12 years, but what a impact they made. Uh, Bonzo, the, the drummer, unfortunately, passed away at a very early age, and they felt that the band was all four of them, and they couldn't continue, you know, unless all four members were alive, so had a couple of reunions, but it never seemed to really turn into a tour or anything like that, but I really enjoy Robert Plant's music as well. I've I think his newer music with Space Shifters, I don't know about that band, but some of his earlier bands that he had, like, just awesome. He's got, like, the Phil Collins playing on drums, and it was just incredible. Um, he was kind of, like, taking the in through the outdoor theme and moving it into 
his own style of music. And then he uses like Arabic themes and I don't know, all different kinds of musical styles. He's constantly reinventing himself. Um, I did see him in concert a couple of years ago. I was, I was amazed that he was, he was at the Greek theater. And you think the lead vocalist of Led Zeppelin, this thing's going to be a sellout overnight. But unfortunately, they needed like Groupon and Gold Star to help sell the tickets even for one night. If it had been, you know, a Led Zeppelin show, my God, you could have filled up, you know, one of the largest arenas. But, you know, he's just, you know, he's a, he's a real artist. He's about the music. Um, he's turned down millions and millions of dollars, you know, for Zeppelin reunions. But he plays some Zeppelin songs, but he, I, he kind of changes them around a little bit. It's kind of cool, but, I, you know, you can't really mess with perfection. I like the way the original arrangement sounded, you know, better than some of the stuff they would do. They would slow it down, or speed it up, or put a little reggae in it. Or whatever. I don't know. No, you don't need to mess around with it. It's perfect the way it is, you know. But, um, you know, I'm all for, like, re uh, rearrangements if it's better. But if it's not as good, why fuss with it? I don't know. But anyway, Robert Plant, what a great, one of the great rock vocalists. This is a movie I don't think I've ever seen. It's still sealed. I remember there was a heavy metal movie that came out, a graphic art cartoon, and had a great uh, music soundtrack. This one's got uh, Billy Idol. But uh, it's kind of cool, you know, uh, this whole comic book rock and roll theme there. Um, what else do we got going on here? We have got the best of Johnny Cash show. Now, I saw this one at Amoeba Records, and they had a like a truncated version of it. It was one disc. And I, this is a two-disc complete version. There's so many great... Uh, Musical performances on the Johnny Cash show. Uh, it's hard to re read it from, you know, looking at the screen, but I'll give you some highlights. It has uh, Johnny Cash doing Ring of Fire, Bob Dylan, and Johnny Cash singing together, Louis Armstrong, Stevie Wonder, Creedence Clearwater Revival. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's a legend. Um, Linda Ronstadt. John, uh, Waylon Jennings, let's see who else is on here, that's different. Neil Young is on here, one of the great singer-songwriter performers. Even Derek and the Dominoes, I love that band. They need to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. That was Eric Clapton's band with um, Dwayne Allman. That should have been, um, hey, Solo De Um is here. Don't you think Derek and the Dominoes, Eric Clapton, Layla, that, that band should have been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I mean, Clapton has been inducted like once as a solo artist, once as a member of Cream, and then once as a member of Blind Faith. But, uh, you know, Derek and the Dominoes, wow. I mean, I guess eventually there's a best recognition for that band. It was only one album and a live album. Great, great piece of work. You didn't get a chance to listen to Derek and the Dominoes, Eric Clapton, early 1970s. Solo de Um, To Do Bone, To Do Bane, what's going on? What's going on? How is life as you know it? What is your perspective, people? Come on. Um, thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't connected to any of these people or you're just shy, just connect with them. They're awesome, and you can always leave. Um, comment on the community page and we'll go back and if we haven't connected with you we'll connect with you again um there's a, a actually a duet on this with derek and the dominoes and johnny cash and carl perkins come on that's crazy isn't it? they're doing a song called matchbox uh jerry Lee lewis is doing a whole lot of shaking going on everly brothers Ray Charles sings Ring of Fire. My gosh, I gotta listen to this thing and watch it. John, uh, Glenn Campbell is on it, doing Wichita Lyman, Neil Diamond, doing Cracklin' Rosie, Roy Orbison is on this. Look at all these artists, it's never ending. I'm skipping some, but I'm just kind of pulling up some highlights here. So, anyway, uh, it was, it's called the Johnny Cash. TV show. He did have a show on a variety show on TV 
This is Johnny Cash, and I'm in black. A lot of people think um, I dress like Johnny Cash because um, it was so funny. One time on Saturday Night Live, um, they had Johnny Cash, and they did this commercial, and they were <laughs> they asked him. It was for I think Gantrick commercial, and then people would shake out their hair on Johnny Cash's shoulders on his shirt and see if they had dandruff or something. That was ridiculous. And he was admitting that he wore dark colors because he's a sloppy eater or something like that. He did the stains didn't show. I don't know. Whatever it is, you know, it, it matches. You know, you, you don't have to. It's not hard to match black on black. Uh, Johnny Johnny Cash, we miss him. He's a legend. I did meet Johnny Cash. And now I'm talking a lot about Johnny Cash. He was doing a children's um, a children's uh, book probably back in the 90s and he was autographed in the Beverly Center. Let me just uh, work on one thing over here for a second. And okay, cool. And what else was I saying? So yeah, I did get a chance to meet Johnny Cash. I wish I would have got his autograph. But, uh, you know, probably can still buy the book on eBay. Autographs. And uh, he was such a nice guy. It was Johnny Cash, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I sometimes even, I like to sing some of his songs, too. He was really, he was really awesome. Johnny, Johnny Cash. All right, as we get going, I know we're just starting out here. Um... I used to watch this show. This was on the weekends when I was growing up. Jim Gardner, The Rockford Queen. I saw it for like five bucks. It's a whole season. Let me see how many discs it has. It can't be. Wow, look at all these discs it has. Uh, five discs. It's less than a dollar. Come on. Uh, I, I got to watch this thing. It was like this. He was a private detective, and it would always start with this recording. Hey, Maria Helena is here. <laughs> Bon tardi. That's right. That means good afternoon. And I'll say good afternoon, good morning, and good evening because we never know where our friends are, in what part of the international date line. How are you doing? I love your videos, Maria. I love your videos, Metal Music, and I love your videos, Solo De Um. You guys are awesome. These are creative people. Um, you are great. I love those videos with uh, Maria. Did you guys connect with her? See her car. She's the nicest person, supportive. Um, maybe she'll do some more live streaming or something. I don't know. I just I always look forward to seeing her new videos. Uh, Todo legal, mio amiga, Maria. You're excelente. Amor, você. You are awesome. Awesome. You are great. So cool. Legal. Tudo legal. I, I really uh, I adore você videos. Yes. Fantastic. So anyway, long story short, this guy, Jim Rockford, would live in a um, he would live in a in a trailer park in the most expensive part of LA in Malibu. <laughs> They really have trailer parks in Malibu. Maybe they do. I don't know. I mean, they have trailer parks in Oceanside near the beach, so maybe they have Malibu. I don't know. It's pretty expensive uh, rental property. <laughs> anyway, he lived in a trailer in, in a trailer in <laughs> Malibu, and he was always getting beat up every every. It was like a format. They would someone would leave a message on his answering machine, beat him up. And then he talked to his dad, go fishing by the pier, and then solve the crime. That was pretty much the format of every show. <laughs> I just loved it, though, the way he had a cool personality. Jim, James Gardner. Do you remember that guy? Jim Rockford. It's Jim Rockford. Uh, all is okay. Chidu Bane. All right. Chidu Bone and Chidu Bane. That is absolutely correct mundo. Um, thank you guys for coming. We're trying to get these uh, live streams going um, because it's fun to come out and meet our friends. And I don't know why I'm sweating. It's so hot. Muito calor in the uh, casa. <laughs> I don't know why. No, Nintendo. But it uh, must be. Um, anyway, uh, I was looking through some uh, memorabilia here. Look at this one. Rolling Stones magazine, YouTube, 
live from outer space. <laughs> oh my God, what a great band! They just they just keep keep it coming. This must have been the uh, 360 tour. I actually saw that largest stage in history. And <laughs> Obama says sometimes our audience isn't as groovy as we like. Well, he's pretty groovy, man. Check him out. YouTube. All four original members for over 40 years. You don't find that uh, every day. Still on top of the game. Uh, this is Bono. I believe this was during uh, 2009. Wow. Can you believe that was 11 years ago? Time is going by very quickly. Um, you're not speaking a little Spanish. Um, let's say... Um, Hola, Maria. <laughs> I'm not so good. Uh, poquito Espanol and uh, Portuguese. Hola, Maria. Buenos uh, saludos. Um, Você fantástica. Connecto uh, with Maria. Maria is fabulosa. Videos. Cabello, <laughs> just awesome, awesome. Um, Mayo, Adoro, Maria. So this is uh, U2, U, uh, the Bande U2. Dos zero zero noventa, ano, ano dos zero, dos zero zero na, nave. This is uh, Big, muito uh, grande show. Anyway, uh, YouTube. I do always. I like to collect things, so I collect um, Rolling Stones magazines and books, videos, you name it. You guys like to collect? What do you like to collect? Uh, let's look at this one. Rock and Roll Babylon. Very cool, man. This is a cool book. Yeah, this is cool stuff. Rod Stewart. Ooh, Rod Stewart. Rod the Mod. Um, who else? There's a little bit too much show. <laughs> uh, what else do we have here? Uh, is that Sam Cook? Otis, Otis Redding. Otis Redding. Um, sitting on the dock of the day. Otis Reddy, um, Morte, and the Cajo accidental. Very sad. Um, what else do we got here? Jim Jim Morrison, The Doors. Yeah, Jim Morrison. Arresto for um, Palabre um, Prohibido in the, in the concerto. He said something that was not... Allowed to say, Eric Clapton. Look at that, Eric Clapton. Jimmy McCulloch from Paul McCartney and Wings, gu guitarist. Uh, who else? Janice Janice Joplin. Let's see who else we got. Elvis Elvis Presley. This is, this is an excellent a uh, libro. Um, Brian Jones and Mick Jagger, the Sobra Mesa, and the, <laughs> um, what is it called? Uh, Carjapal. <laughs> this is crazy stuff. Very crazy stuff. Elton John. Elton John. Pete Townsend. <laughs> the who? Johnny Rotten. Johnny Rotten from the Pistols. Punk Rock. John Lennon. John Lennon getting thrown out of a, a club in West Hollywood. Blondie, no Blondie, Heart of Glass, 
Um, what else do we got here? Oh, just a lot of cool stuff. This is a nice book. It's called Rock and Roll Babylon. I'm not sure if it's still in print, but it's it's worthwhile. Oh, sorry about that. Something fell down. Uh oh. Excuse me, guys. I gotta I gotta get that. Too many things fell over here. I need some more uh, surface space. Okay. Just working on some arts and crafts. <laughs> so uh, we don't want that on the floor. <laughs> Gotta pick everything up. Uh, this is, if you guys are Beatles fans, this is a really, I feel like I'm doing an infomercial. This is called Hard Day's Rights. It's Todo Information about the Beatles. Each song. Uh, paperback writer. Information. Um, each, each album, each song, Ticket to Ride, Todos uh, Estorio, Histo Historia, uh, every, every song, and it goes in order all the way through the career, every song. This was uh, Brian Jones, or, oh, Alan Klein, that was the manager. So, Here Comes the Sun, one of the most popular songs, popular, uh, on Apple Music is Here Comes the Sun, Mayor Popular. Okay. So what else do we got here? George George Harrison and his wife. She was, Eric Clapton wrote Layla, the song Layla for Esta Mujer. Yep. Yes. Uh, the Beatles. Yay! Great band. Fantastico. Let's see what we got here. Alrighty. Um, what else do we got going on here? Um, I've got some. Anybody into Magico? We stay Magico. That's right. I love um, magic shows. Excuse me. Here is. You know this guy? This is Chris Angel, Historio by Chris Angel, Mag Mag Magico. Uh, Chris Angel has a show in Las Vegas. It's fantastic, though. And he has a, a television programme, Seis Seasons called Mind Freak, right? Mind Freak. This is Season Numero Uno. Amazing. Magical. Okay. I'm going to put this here. Chris Angel. Season Dos. All those episodes. Hold on. I think it's bad. Uh, season Trace. Season three, Todos episode, fantastic. I have on YouTube, you can view on YouTube. Um, Mind Free, Chris Angels, season quattro, four. Complete season four. Amazing, amazing magic. Illusion. Okay, let's look at... Season five. Synchro. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it. Season five. And see now? Sace. Mind Freak. Chris Angel. Awesome. Rock and roll. <laughs> Rock and roll magic though. Perfecto. Highly recommend this. I want to watch. I just want to watch this. I can't go to magic shows anymore, so I might as well watch it on TV. Uh, this is Halloween Especial um, with Chris Angel. And, and then uh, Dos Episodes. 
So, wow. Excelente uh, Magicio. All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, let me put this down. Solo Dium is uh, is out there. Metal music. We've got Maria. Who else is out there? Um, uh, we've got, I think Hollywood Rabbi is out here. And thank you, Hollywood Rabbi, for for all of your support. He's encouraging people to uh, give me a thumbs up, and I really appreciate that. Wow. Since you said that, I got a lot of extra thumbs up. So. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, my man. My man, man. Very good. Okay. Um, anyway. Check out Hollywood Rabbi. He's got a lot of good universal themes. And uh, what else can I tell you guys? Uh, it, it may be time for us to look at some more um, CDs. That's right. We got to look at some more CDs. Where, you guys like rare CDs? Um, I sure as heck do. <laughs> so I'm going to put some of this over here so that we can make some more room. Or some rare CDs. Yay! You know, I don't repeat much of this. So, um, you probably haven't seen me show this before. You may never see these CDs anywhere. So, please stay tuned. I'm going to grab a couple boxes over here and we're going to get started. Okay, I'm coming back, everybody. Don't worry, I haven't abandoned you yet. I'm bringing over some uh, some boxes to see these. These are kind of heavy, so I'm just going to put one of them down. Um, all right, we've got an album here called The Who, and it's live in Toronto. The Who live in Toronto Gardens, 1975. Look at that one. You guys ever see that one? Mm, I guess not. The Who Live in Toronto. I love The Who. It's a two CD disc. And on it, it says, not for sale, for only for fans. Wow. So it's just, just for fans. You got to be a fan to get this, to find it in here. Uh, very cool album. So. Anyway, here that was The Who. This is an album by Neil Young. It has, um, from 1990, Jones Beach, New York. And I believe it has one song called Down by the River, which features Bruce Springsteen. Not a cool song. Say Hey My My, Sugar Mountain, Rockin' in the Free World, This Notes for You. Heart of Gold, After the Gold Rush, Ohio. Wow, great, great album, guys. Uh, I think I showed you this Neil Young one before, Pearl Jam. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, the disc says The Jammers. <laughs> two disc live version. There's probably one or two songs with Pearl Jam. Most of it is probably not with him. But it's cool to find even those couple songs. I really idolized them. If I ever showed you this one, this is No Nukes when they had those concerts for Against Nuclear Power. Bruce, this is Bruce Princeton, the East Street Band, and it's two discs. Let's see if we take a look at it. It says an import. It looks a little like this. I don't know if you can see it. No Nukes. Bruce Princeton, always a component of. 
he's always a proponent of, you know, free speech and power to the people. All right, David Bowie. This is outside of Budapest. Do you see that one? I think it's um, it was originally from an FM radio broadcast in Budapest, Hungary, 1997. That's very cool. I gotta listen to this one. Um, I may have showed you this one. This is Murder Incorporated. This spring scene. It has um, it's recorded songs from the power station and hit factory back in 1982 and 84. Some of these songs ended up on board in the USA and some of them were never released. Cynthia, Frankie, Sugarland, None But the Brave. I don't remember these songs. But then again, he does a few from the album like Board in the USA, Working on the Highway, The Early Days, you know, Janie Don't You Lose, Art. Very cool stuff. All right. I'm going to put a few of these back so we can have some more space to look through some different ones. This is uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young together. And then there's a whole disc of the group, The Band. That's cool. Imagine seeing all that in 1974. So you got all the great hits of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young on two discs. And the third disc is The Band. Uh, and they're playing separately. I don't think they play with Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Do um, you remember Jethro Tull from back in the 80s? They, they won a the band the best heavy metal band. I don't think they were really heavy metal. It's hard to have heavy metal music with a flute player, but to me, they were more like Renaissance rock. And here you've got uh, it's called Watchers on the Storm. It has like concert from them in the 80s, and then it shows it does have um, things they did, like even on Howard Stern's show at the end. It's kind of an interesting album. That's right. Very cool. Very cool indeed. All right, let's look at some of this stuff. I'm not sure who this guy is, but I just was like two bucks in his autograph. Okay. Danger US News. It's probably worth something. Uh, here's another U2 album. I may have shown you this one in the past, but this is the original. The original deal. Not the original as you're going to get, but live in New Jersey. The night the lights went off in New Jersey. U2. So many unreleased U2 recordings I'm finding out. They actually have them on um, YouTube. There's a channel that you can put in. Here's a rare Alice Cooper album live in Toronto. And this, I believe, was earlier on in his career. So don't recognize any of the songs. Science fiction freak out song. This is another that's live in Toronto. A rare album. Do we have any Kiss fans out there? This is a Kiss single. And even though I have the album, I wanted the single because it's pretty hard to find. Crazy Nights. That was recorded back in the 1980s. 1980s. This is a really hard to find album. It's called It's from the Dynasty Tour, Kiss Alive. In 79. That's right. Kiss Alive in 79. And uh, it's got songs like Got to Love. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool stuff. Love Gun, Firehouse, New York Groove, which was a Ace Freely song from the solo album. Now, this one I don't see every day. I probably only saw it one time and bought it, bought it in the store. It is called Kiss Remast in Tokyo, Japanese broadcast TCD set. And it's from 2001. I believe 
No, I'm not sure if it's with all the original members or not. It might it might have had like it might have been the time when like Peter Chris left and we had Ace Freely, Paul and Gene. That's what it looks like in the photo to me. But then again, it could be <laughs> the other guy looks so much like Ace Freely, it could be uh, just two original members. I'll have to look it up. But uh, nonetheless, Kiss Live. Oh, they're, they're great. You know, you, what year are you looking at? I, I like the original lineup, but I take what I can get. This album, Kiss Live in Roosevelt, New Jersey. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, really cool stuff there. For, I think it's a soundboard. It's really well recorded. All right. Um, Slightly anti-Semitic uh, title, though, New Jersey Jews. This is actually from New York. I don't know what they're referring to in that one. Uh, let's look at this one. Remember that the reunion album when all four members came out and did a recording called Psycho Circus? That's right. That was a result of the MTV Unplugged when all four of them got together and played Unplugged. We decided to record an album go on tour. And this is like unreleased songs and alternate tracks from the album. It's really cool. It's all well recorded. It's soundboard recordings. Yes, Psycho Circus. Come to the Psycho Circus. Welcome to the show. All right, here's Zeppelin. Another night on Blueberry Hill. I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. Actually, uh, they do sing Blueberry Hill and Long Tall Sally. It's kind of unusual to hear it with in some of those songs. Um, but for some reason, they have a, a Mo Game David star <laughs> here on the record label. It's supposedly digitally remastered. Interesting double recording, Red Zeppelin Live. Was, uh, amazing. Uh, another group that is awesome live or in the studio is the Eagles. Do you remember the Eagles? This one is from New York, 1974, original lineup, Peaceful Easy Feeling, Already Gone, and I think it does feature Jackson Brown, who wrote uh, a big hit from them, Take It Easy. It's in the Beacon Theater. you got to listen to this one. It's really cool. And so much stuff. Here's another a rare live Eagles album. This album is Lives of Outlaws featuring Jackson Brown. I didn't realize they toured with Jackson Brown so much in the early years. Um, what year was this? This is 1973 and 1974, all from radio broadcast. They were great even in their early years. Um, we unfortunately lost Glenn Fry a couple of years ago, but his son, Deacon Fry, is amazing. He he kind of looks like an earlier version of the Ben Fry and sings just like him. And, you know, he really helped you slow the band to the. It's just such a beautiful thing uh, to, to behold. Here's uh, 20, 21 Nights. It's from a book I bought about Prince. It was like a copy of the book. And it has a concert of him in France. The book is really cool. It was about the tour in the 2000s. Um, this is the first uh, Beatles album. It was called the Decca Tapes, the Decca Audition Tapes. And this is a Japanese release. You can see the Japanese letters on it. And in this, it has uh, songs like Money, Like You Do, Do, The Summer Mucho, Two Cool Cats, Waiting, Crying, Crying, Waiting, Hoping, which was Buddy Collie's song. And believe it or not, this album by the Beatles was not um, accepted by, they were rejected by every record label. Imagine if they would have given up. So we don't, we never hear about the, we never hear about a loser until they become a winner and the Beatles become big winners. Do they believe in the music? Um, that looks like Pete Best. He's not in the, was not in the band anymore. There were a couple of different 
from the report. And then we got Ringo after that. All right, now this is uh, Electric Light Orchestra Part Two. Remember, there's a part one and part two. This one has some of the members, but it doesn't have the lead vocalist Jeff Lynn. And we did get somebody else to sing. It sounds almost exactly like Jeff Lynn. They do all the great hits like uh, Evil Woman, uh, Living Thing, Mr. Blue Sky. They even released a couple uh, studio albums too, but this is a live album. It's hard to find. It's an import from Germany. Interesting, right? The Electric Light Orchestra Part 2. I did see um, Jeff Lynn's Electric Light Orchestra a couple of times. He was amazing, amazing people. You had a chance to see him. He's in the 70s and he still sounds exactly the way he did 40 years ago. Uh, you 2 The Lost Broadcast Volume 2. This is the early years. Uh, you 2 They're a great band. Uh, also, the, their early album sounds a little different because they experimented in a lot of different music, like industrial rock, they did a disco album, you know, country, folk, whatever, you know, they, they're there. Great album. Um, I'm going to look at another one over here. This one is uh, Rolling Stones. It's called Given Stones. And it's from September 6, 2005, live from St. Paul Energy Center. It's a Jolly Roger record label. <laughs> Interesting. You look at the original record label that it came with uh, here. Rolling Stones. Skin and Stones. If you ever see these rare albums, just buy them, guys, because they uh, don't hang around forever. Uh, this is... This was the Rolling Stones' response to Sgt. Pepper, their Satanic Majesty's Request. And this album really, um, really changed things. Kind of psychedelic. And they throw in like 10 extra songs. That's what makes it real. You can, it, it kind of looks like they're kind of paying homage to Sgt. Pepper a little bit, you know, it's all the somehow the, the way the album is laid out. I really liked it, though. It's kind of unusual for the Rolling Stones to criticize it, but it has a song like She's a Rainbow and, yeah, interesting songs. I'm not sure if it's still in print or not, but this one definitely is rare because it has 10 extra bonus songs that were not released. And here is Rolling Stones Live at Leeds. You know, the, the Who Live at Leeds was very uh, popular, but Live at Leeds by the Rolling Stones, they never really did too much. This is live in, in Newcastle, UK. They also, you know, the University of Leeds. And it's pretty nice. It's like a digipad. Uh, I, I noticed we have DJ Selene here. And who else joined us? Uh, Maxim. Thank you, Maxim, for coming back. Um, and supporting DJ Jerry. Thank you all, all you people out there. All you cool people. Thank you. Uh, DJ Selene, obrigado. And we got Maxim here. DJ Selene was just uh, teaching her students uh, via the internet. Uh, distance learning. She's really a master at it. At least check out her videos and check and see if you have children and they want to learn, keep them learning over the summer. Please check out DJ Selene. Maxim is here to save the day. Thank you, Maxim. You are so awesome. We're just looking at a couple of Rolling Stones albums here. Here's a Rolling Stones album from 1978. It's the Paris Outtakes and it has songs that made it to their Sun Girls album, like Miss You, and songs from the, that never made it, like Yellow Cab and BG Jim, We Had It All, Everlasting Is My Love, Let's Go Steady. But it does include alternate versions of Yellow of uh, Lies that made it to the album and Shatter, Rolling Stones. 
Paris Outtake Volume 2. And this is what it looks like from the inside. Good right there. And they're still relevant after 58 years. Still energetic. Um, this is the Rolling Stones, The Brussels Affair. It's a digipack. And it has uh, recorded from two shows in Brussels, Belgium. It's a pretty legendary album called The Brussels Affair. But this one's nice. It has, it's culminated from two different shows. Rolling Stones, yes. I think I've gone through everything of note in this one, this album here. So it may be time to go through another, <laughs> another a thing here. Um, I came in and everyone left. No, everybody is still here. It's just that sometimes the internet comes in and out, I think. Um, yeah, well, we needed DJ Selene because she translates it for our guests. I was trying to translate a little bit into um, Portuguese, but DJ Selene is much better at translation than I am. Um, yeah, come on in. I think DJ Selene is here. Wow, and she's dressed up like Minnie Mouse. I wanted to take a oh, picture of you. You took the surprise away. Hello. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, I forgot my ears. Hold on. Yeah, well, that's a yeah, surprise. The okay. surprise will be. I want to take a picture of you before you get out. Can, can we? When you come in, I want to take a photo because I think you don't, you don't have a full body photo of you, do you? You see her costume, it's really cute. I think my ratings are gonna start going up now. <laughs> there, okay, here she is. Yay. Yay. Hello everybody, hello everybody on the chat. Olá pessoal, olá todo mundo que estava aí. Eu estava na minha classe, por isso não estava um, participando muito. Mas acabou a classe, a última classe do ano. Oh, that was my last class of the wow. year, and tomorrow is the graduation. That's and I so wrote cool. about all my plans in, my, in one of my videos. And uh, yeah, today was thematic units. We had ninjas and uh, Spider-Man, Iron Man, all sorts of superheroes. And I hear myself talking in the living room because I wasn't watching over there. Long distance. Huh? So, but can I, can I take a picture of you? Um, Hold on, let me. Uh, because I, I know as soon as I'm done, you're gonna like be like back into something more comfortable, and then yes, I'm not gonna exactly. be able to. I'll, I'll I'm not gonna be able to do. Anymore. So like, we're gonna, you guys are gonna get in to, in on a photo session. Yes. Uh, with PJ Soane, she is very you fashionable. Want to use my phone? Um, I, could, I guess I could use this. Um, well, I would just take a picture. I sit over here on the on the stream or out of the stream. Uh, just look at me. Okay, there you go. And then I want to take a picture of you standing up, or, uh, standing up over here. <laughs> Guys, it's, it's photo shoot time. Yeah, okay. It, okay, so I want to get up. a picture. So nobody's going to be on the chat. That's right. Right. All right. right. Oh, okay, right. you guys will just have to imagine it. Maybe we'll post some yeah, pictures maybe, later. Maybe, maybe in the hallway. Come on over here. We're gonna, uh, one, second. Gonna one, break, second. one second. Just one second. One second. Um, here, hold on. Hold on, guys. We're still trying to figure this picture out. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know. Yeah, I have some packing material to my eBay business, so I'm going to move this out of Oh my God, so much work. Okay, get that light going here. The light. Okay. Okay, this is good. Okay, what's a mini mouse pose? Little heart. Oh, heart is good. Oh, just wait. Wait, the light. <laughs> the light just fell down. It's a good mini mouse pose. Anybody saying anything? Hola, Marianelle. Nobody saying anything. Okay. Yeah, we can take. We're just taking a quick break. Quick break for a picture. Photo op. Photo op. DJ Slady will be dressed in something more comfortable, and yes. I will never get these awesome photos. Well, in my pajamas or something like that. Okay, forget about the light. I don't know, for some reason, the 
the legging is coming down. All right, I'll, I'll talk to people while we're over here. Okay, so, yes, so this has been like really interesting. Um, are you ready? Because I'm already tired. <laughs> And I have to fix my one. nose. I, I think I rubbed my nose. So for this speech, I'm going to have to fix the nose. Hold okay. on. All right. We'll, we'll get it perfect. We cleared out some space in our photo studio here. And we are almost ready to do this. Okay. Let's see. Okay, well, what else are we doing here? Put this one back over here. We're waiting for DJ, <clears throat> DJ Salani to come back into the studio. <laughs> All, right. All right, so there's DJ Salani. And we're going to take a picture of her. Yeah, yeah, studio. I'm on back. Hey, guys. If you missed this, today was thematic day in my classroom, my last classroom. Okay, you to take a picture. What's the pose for Minnie Mouse? What's a good pose? Oh, I used to have gloves too, but I don't know. Forget it. Did you wear gloves today? No, I didn't. I don't have my special shoes. Are going to do this? Are going to do this? Okay, I'll just do like, like, a little Minnie Mouse pose. Oh, there it goes. Let me take some of your phone. Okay, let's see. Maybe my phone is a good this phone. Yeah, this is very um, fuzzy, but um, I think it's okay. Oh, the rubber is stopping. How can you rub it? Can't wait to see the pictures. <laughs> okay. The magic of technology. Is it Tony writing again? <laughs> he loves to write on Hollywood Rabbi. Can I bring the light over here? Because it was kind of fuzzy before. Let's start again with the light. Is that better? I don't know. Are you the yeah, it is better. It's better. I don't want that pose. I like that pose. So I want to take some of my camera now that it's not fuzzy. Okay. Fuzzy, fuzzy. What's the pose? Oh. Like a pose. Pose. Like yeah. a pose. Like a pose. Okay. Yeah, right there and strike like a pose. Manic Day is here. Oh, that has a good one now. All That's right. A better background than anything. All right. I'm sure you guys are going to really love. There's nobody watching. <laughs> I don't know. But they watch the replay, so don't worry. I am watching. I'm watching. People will watch the replays. Yeah, I hope so. What they do. You I've got some people that were watching the replays. Check my day. picture. Yeah, I got some cool pictures too. You want to see mine? How oh, cool. Oh, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah. And I okay. can I can also like use some filters and even make it even spiffier. I put it on my um, Instagram. I wrote, you know, before my class started, I wrote I had a little post about my first uh, Zoom and I'm on Zoom when I did that. So let me see. Oh, I got some likes. Cool. I'll show you. Look. I post it on Instagram. And that's me on my Zoom screen waiting for my students to come in. And uh, they were so cute. There were princess and the police officer, and we had superheroes. And um, that was really fun. Lots of superheroes. 
So yeah, it was a uh, fun, 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 fun day. Anyway, I'm having a little headache, so I have to eat something because I didn't have much breakfast. Woke up late, so I'll be on the chat. And um, here's DJ Jerry for you. Well, thank you for, for joining us. We had a celebrity here, DJ Selene, uh, dressed as Minnie Mouse. I'm glad we were able to get some, some really cool pictures. I'll try to post them on DJ Jerry on my Instagram. So I'll post my Instagram here if you want to see the uh, actually what some of these photos look like in a little higher fidelity. One for a thumbnail, like in front of the screen. You take a picture of the screen, you and me. And then, like right here, you take a picture of your screen, and that would be your thumbnail. For this one? For this one, we already have a Yeah, thumbnail. no, I, I don't have a good thumbnail for this one. I just have me going. <laughs> All right, so how do you do it? Then I go with my camera, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the camera. Mm -hmm. Want to see? Mm -hmm. Here we go. All right, let's, let's see. Something. Wow, that is cool. I like that. Yeah, what do you think about this as a thumbnail? I really like that one. Yeah, we can swap it out. Right now I have just a picture of me going. I think it's cool with a computer and everything. Yeah. Right? That is awesome. Thank you for good, uh, Do you want to take one without the computer? Just a selfie of us? It's cool. Just we're doing Photoshop. <laughs> I, I can't get her in costume very often, so you'll have to forgive me. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Okay, how about you want to do? Yeah, like okay, so you, you press the button. I got the big ones. Okay, here we go. No. Oh. No. Oh. Oh. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Can we fly away here? No, we're okay. Um, no. Maybe you need to look at look at this camera again. This is the camera. Look at that camera. Okay, now you know how okay. Dallas feels. <laughs> When you bring them to Disneyland and we make them. DJ today with the installed okay, I, I, I love DJ Selena. I got to capture the moments to remember. Okay, get, you're you're going to take the picture. I'm going to look at the dots. Okay, look at the dots. I have to have more of my outfit. Though. I know. So can you hold the camera? Are you holding it? No, you're not holding it. Now you're holding it. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at the camera. Okay. Is that any good? I don't know. <laughs> uh, as good as it's going to get. One more? Oh, gosh. <laughs> now we, know, we, we torture our kids with these photos. Now we're torturing the, the, the but, people no. on the chat. But yeah. you actually have some of my outfit. I'm going to get more of your outfit. Okay. Okay, look at the camera. <sighs> it's hard to capture the beauty of DJ Selene. Yeah, exactly, because there's not too much beauty no, there to capture. No, it never can <laughs> do justice, but it's uh, it's close proximity. You look great on the photo. All right, um, very photogenic. All right, guys, um, let's look at some more CDs because when <laughs> if you don't give me much. If you don't talk to me, I have to talk to you about CDs. That's what I'm, I'm into. What are you into? All right. All right. Here we go. Um, David Bowie. David Bowie. I love this album called Stage. I remember I bought it on um, vinyl back in the 80s. It's from uh, 1978 or something like that. Where is this from? And he does all these great songs like from Ziggy Stardust, he does like Heroes, Fame. I think it was from the late 1970s originally. It's kind of a nice box set digipack. It's called Stage, David Bowie. Great vocalist. He had that kind of like that Elvis thing going on. Um, let's see what happened here. Okay, very good. All right, we are going to look at another Elvis. Elvis. This is who yeah, this is. This is David Bowie. He sings a little like Elvis, but 
live experience. Wow. Suffragette City. This was probably the character called the Thin White Duke. And pretty cool. PVC 15 Nassau Coliseum. I think they released an official copy of this, but it's still cool to see the, the bootleg of it. And here is David Bowie live in Santa Monica. This is when he was in Stardust in 1972. There it is. It's the original issue. Let's see if I can flip this around. Santa Monica, 1972. Ziggy Stardust. Ziggy played guitar. All right. And David Bowie did a lot of music for soundtracks. Uh, this is an album called American Psycho. And it has a David Bowie song called Something in the Air. I don't think that's on any other album. This album also has Pump Up the Volume by Mars. It has Huey Lewis and the new Skip to the Square. New Order, The Pure. You spin it around like a record. Yeah, I'm cool. I should listen to this one someday. American Psycho. David Bowie. He was an actor, too. Did you guys know that? Now, this album originally came out as a video. And then they released it as an audio CD. So I bought it twice. I bought it as a video and an audio CD. And, and uh, we lost David Bowie a couple of years ago, but they, they keep releasing more of his music. Um, this is a double CD. has a lot of his greatest hits. And after this album came out, he stopped touring. I think his health declined. He may have had a heart attack or something like that. But he was doing a lot of tours in the early 2000s. He was really getting back to form. It was great. Um, what else do we got going on here? Okay. I'm going to do a couple administrative things here. And I'm going to come right back to you. Okay, who else do we got here? Uh, we have Dallas, and we have someone named Jack, I believe, is here, too. And DJ Selene. The gang's all here. All right. We're just taking a quick pause, everybody. Just kind of, um, I need to do a couple of administrative things. So go out and grab something from the ice box. <laughs>
Okay, well, we got a few more people joining us. Thank you guys for, for hanging in there. Um, Corliss is here. Dallas, EJ Salini. We're, we're, what we're doing right now is we're going through some, some albums, some hard-to-find albums. Okay, let's um, let's get back to some of these CDs. And here's David Bowie and Nine Inch Nails, the double album, recorded in 1995. It's also a live radio broadcast, and it's been cool. Trent Reznor and David Bowie singing together. You don't really see this too often. It's called Back in Anger, 1995 Radio Transmissions. Love that rare stuff. Now, um, this is a really nice Bowie collection. Nothing has changed, David Bowie. And it has these CDs. Really cool. A lot of great Bowie songs. Kind of goes through his whole 50 years of his career. Right from the early stuff all the way up to the last things that he recorded. And um, there might be a few different mixes here as well. Singles. Or, wow, it's just a really nice album. The changes of David Bowie. He was like a chameleon. He just got all those things. So this was really nice to have this collection. I have other collections of David Bowie, but for some reason I feel this is the most comprehensive of them all. And I also have a couple of his video, uh, either concerts and 
his greatest hit stuff that he did, the promo films. <laughs> MTV used to really show a lot of them. Do you know that David Bowie and Cher got together to do a, a duet on the Sonny and Cher show or the Cher show, something like that, in the 70s? Um, this is super rare. My son gave it to me for like Father's Day. I really love it. It's well recorded and it has songs from his 74, 75 tour. And he does Young Americans and a medley of songs with Cher. Another song called Can You Hear Me? Oh. Imagine if it was Bowie and Cher. <laughs> the Bowie and Cher show. Uh, anyway, um, let's look at some more rare David Bowie. This one is an album called I Select. And it is an album that was made in the USA. And it's Bowie selecting different mixes of his songs. So he picks them. And most of them are pretty... Um, like deep cuts, let's say, and some of them aren't. Like you have Life on Mars, you have um, Fantastic Voyage, Loving the Alien. But it's kind of a nice album. I try. It, it, there's a story behind it because I, because I tried to buy it from Amoeba, and then um, when I got home, I looked through my bag of CDs. I noticed it was missing. There's a couple albums missing. This was one of them. I guess the guy put it aside. He didn't put it in my bag. He didn't ring it up, whatever the thing was. I don't think I was charged for it. And I was so sad because I'd never see this album anywhere. And then, like, a week later, it ended up back in the uh, David Bowie uh, section of a new record when I did it. Buy it again. it happened to me a couple times. Though. I don't know why. You've got to be careful. Make sure they put everything in the bag. <laughs> They have a lot of uh, they have a lot of people working there though. It's usually pretty organized. It's just the other side, but God, me and Bowie were reu reunited. Do you know that David Bowie, um, my English teacher in um, 1975, and I was like in fourth grade or whatever, she, her husband managed David Bowie, and she brought us over to her house to see Zoe Bowie. That's David's son. And had this big shamu doll, I never forget it. And it used to stay, they would babysit for David Bowie's son. What are the chances? And she would have us call in and the radio stations and request his single at the time, which was Fame and Young Americans. I think it was Fame. But it was kind of cool that we had a teacher whose husband would manage it. And it's true, I really looked it up years later. And her husband really was the always, I think, lawyer or manager or something like that. Uh, but back to Led Zeppelin. This is um, their final album called Coda. And thank you, DJ Slaney. You really like these uh, CDs. This is Led Zeppelin. Um, and it has, they were releasing their albums, re digitally remastering them. And then they were including like extra discs of unreleased recordings. Um, I kind of jumped the gun. This one was a little bit ripped. It was reduced in price a little bit, but I'll have to repair it. That's the way it came. But the albums, the CDs are like in really good condition. And it includes music from all parts of their career that never got released. Including the single, Hey, Hey, What Can I Do? Which is a great song. Um, I have a couple more. I don't know. Some of these are mixed up, but I wanted to finish up with David Bowie. This is a single of his, The Heart's Filthy Lesson. It includes a bonus track not available on any album. That's why I love singles so much, because it comes up with a song called Nothing to be Desired. You can only get it on the single. And uh, it says DB here, Data Bowie. Yeah. It's a kind of a funny picture of him, you know, dressed up like a gangster or a movie producer or something like that. Here's an album that they released posthumously. It's uh, similar to David Live, but it's a different show, and it's called Cracked After. It's a digital David Bowie Live. Well, very well recorded. Some people think it's maybe even better than the, the official David Live album, but 
it's definitely a little bit different, and uh, some of the arrangements are a little different, so it's very worthwhile listening to that one. Um, let's look at another Led Zeppelin album. This one is called Led Zeppelin Mothership. And I know that you've probably seen this, this is like the greatest six album, but pretty much rare about it is it has a DVD. Usually it's just a CD. It has a third disc, which is DVD, and has a lot of the great songs. I'm anxious to see this on DVD, like probably live recordings or TV appearances or something like that. But you rarely ever get to see um, this album sold with the DVD companion disc. So it's kind of a nice feature. Um, we talked about Robert Plant a little earlier today, the lead vocalist of Led Zeppelin. And this is called A Conversation with Robert Plant. It talks about his album Mighty Rearranger. And these were probably available only for radio stations so they could play you know, emotions about his new album. He's very articulate and he has a really nice way of representing himself and talking. So. Anyway, um, we have, um, yeah, this is like how the other album looked as a two, two disc, um, but I much prefer the three disc. I, I don't like to miss, miss out on stuff. Um, here is, we were watching a movie the other night. What was it? There was something on Netflix. I can't remember, but everybody, it was like a secret society. They had to wear these masks that were, from the uh, Dark Ages, when they, that's how the doctors would dress up like those during the Black Plague. And uh, John Paul Jones, the Thunder Thief. You know who John Paul Jones was? He's probably the least known member of Led Zeppelin. He plays bass and uh, piano. Great, great musician. And this is his solo album that came out. Um, I'm not sure when this came out, uh, or 2001, John Paul Jones, um, from Led Zeppelin. Here is Jimmy Page, he is uh, John Paul Jones, John Bonham and Friends. That's kind of a cool album, a box set of early... Uh, rare stuff. I think it's from 1968 and 1970. A lot, of, a lot of rare stuff and bonus tracks. No introduction necessary. One of the greatest guitarists of all time, Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Very cool, huh? All right. Well, we're moving right along here. I think I have a couple more this is Jimmy Page and Friends, uh, live at the Club Calais Ballroom. I don't remember buying this one. <laughs> That's cool, though. Pretty rare. 1984. And it's a double album. Kind of a lot of blues songs and rock and roll jams. Jimmy, and, Jimmy Page, I'm sorry. Jimmy Page and Friends, tribute to Alex Plummer, live at the Club Filets Ballroom in Nottingham, England. Remember the Sheriff of Nottingham and Robin, Robin Hood? <laughs> That's where that story took place. Um, what else do we have here? Neil Young, Prairie Wind. He's been putting out a lot of albums. And this also has a DVD, I believe. So it's a um, so it's an audio CD and a DVD. Neil Young, Prairie Wind. He fluctuates between doing like acoustic albums and electric full band albums. Here is the Fix, Greatest Hits. Remember them? One thing leads to another. Red skies at night. And a We Ourselves. They were a really nice band from the the eighties. You just don't see them anymore, but the greatest hits is kind of what I need to kind of keep me going with them. I didn't get deeply into them, but I liked a lot of their hits. And uh, it's like a 
couple more Neil Young albums here. This is called <laughs> Neil Young, The Promise of the Real. That's his back again. And this is the Monsanto years. And it has a DVD including in studio performances and behind the scene footage from the making of the album. Um, there was a film called The Monsanto Years. I'm not sure if this is the same one or if this is just something else. But, uh, Monsanto is actually runs the FDA, the um, Food and Drug Administration in America. So, you know, I think he's referring to <clears throat> some of that corruption. <clears throat> it's like putting the uh, mouse in charge of the cheese there. Anyway, um, Neil Young. Peace Trail. Is that the same album we saw before? No, that's Prairie Wind. They look similar, don't they? Like, oh my God, did I buy the same album? No, this is Peace Trail. So anyway, he put out a lot of albums. This one is from... Um, from the year 2016. And got a lot of interesting songs on there. Great singer songwriter. Good friend of Paul McCartney. Neil Young International Harvest. Did you see this one before? It's a live album. This is a treasure. Let's listen to that one. Neil Young Dreaming. Live in 1992. This is definitely a live album. And what do we got here? Another Neil Young one, Promise of the Real. It's called Paradox. It's a very cool stuff here. Um, Neil Young, Live at the Roxy. That was um, something that came out years after. Um, I believe that. Judy Garland came to one of his concerts, so he did an album called Tribute to Judy. Judy, Judy Garland, you know, from the Wizard of Oz. Here's Neil Young and the Blue Notes live. This is an official release. Um, the Pullman series, this. And here is another album of Neil's called Earth. Contains modified content. I don't really mean by that. Interesting. It has some live stuff on it as well as the studio releases. Um, let's find another album here. This is called Story Tone. This came out in 2014. Another great Neil Young album. Deluxe out double release with 10 brand new songs. 92 piece orchestra choir and some with a 60 piece orchestra three with a big band. Also includes additional studio album of solo versions of all songs. Pretty cool stuff. All right. Here is an album called Ford. It's from the Ford Festival and it has a song by Neil Young and your lonely heartbreaks. And that's done with his greatest band called Crazy Horse. Uh, here's a Neil Young duet with Chrissy Hyde from the Pretenders, Cool for Your Love. And he also does All Along the Watchtower. Uh, Bill song. Crazy Horse Left the Dead. I guess they feel it left out when Neil Young moves on without them. Sort of a response to it. They're a great, great band. They have some combination with Neil Young. Crazy Horse. Here is Neil Young Live, unapproved. Got all these songs like Walking in the Free World, Out of Gold. It might even be a. Like acoustic recording, just putting a piece of guitar, I'm not sure. Look at this one. This is a uh, FM radio broadcast, double album. And it was recorded in, try to find out, oh yeah, 2000, 2001. Neil Young and Craig Road, Rock Slide Festival, Denmark broadcast, 2001. What a great uh, 
David Bowie, a single Ashes to Ashes, and John and Tony dancing from the box set Sound and Vision. It's a CD video, probably controlled in disk drive. And this one, if you're a Crosby Stills Nash and Young fan, this is also an FM radio broadcast recorded at the Bill Graham Memorial Concert in Golden Park. San Francisco, November 3rd, 1991. Wow, and it, you know, Neil Young has got reunited with Crosby Stills and Nash, and they really had a great chemistry together. This is them doing some of their biggest hits together Teach Your Children, Love the One You're With, Long Way You Run, Long Time Gone, Southern Cross, and they love to break your heart. Wooden Ships in Ohio, running time 47 minutes. Very really cool. Neil Young. Now, um, he put out a movie and a CD. It's called Weld, which makes this so valuable. Limited edition is there's an extra album called Arc included, where he just kind of does experimental music with his electric guitar. Very cool. All right, I'm going to put some of these back, and I'm going to send a message, so I will be right back here. Don't go anywhere. Sit, sit tight. We've got some more cool stuff coming up. Let's see what we have to I'm going to put this down for a second. It's getting a little heavy. And um, we've been on for about an hour and a half. I'm probably going to go for my traditional two hours. So that means we need some more material. See, I prepare this stuff in advance, believe it or not. And um, we do have some more music. Okay, well, we're saying hello to all our, our viewers out there. Let me put this back and grab a couple more boxes. Don't you go anywhere, and don't you forget it. Okay, people, I am back, back in black. All right, here is a uh, cool collectible called Elvis. Look at that. International Collector's Edition. Elvis 
Here I go. Put this down for a second. And look at Steve Miller Band. This is a program from his concert tour. I believe it's back from the 70s. Everything's in black and white. He's a great musician. I love the song, The Joker, Take the Money and Run, Fly Like an Eagle. This is from Paul McCartney's World Tour. Hey, Hetty, how you doing? How are you? Thank you for coming to my live stream. You are so cool. I love your, I love your cooking videos. Everybody connect with Hetty. Am I pronouncing right? Hetty Cardona. She has been a longtime friend of our channel. So please connect with her. Um, leave a message on the community. And Hollywood Rabbi says, Hi, Hetty is awesome. <laughs> you better believe it. She is completely awesome, and it, her videos are so much fun to watch. And she does sometimes some recipes, really delicious recipes. She's such a nice person, too. She's friendly, and mellow, and personable. Great person to connect with. And we are looking at a few <coughs> rare CDs today. <clears throat> Maybe some stuff that you might not have seen before. This is uh, Paul McCartney live in concert. And live at the Tokyo Dome. Three, <clears throat> excuse me, three different discs, including a sound check. You know what a sound check is? is like before the concert, they, they run through like a dress rehearsal. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, what else do we have here? This is, remember, Genesis with Phil Collins. This is a rare Genesis concert. And it was recorded in 2007 for the Genesis reunion back in, um, back in 2007 when we got together again. Here is, I believe, another one. This one's from Peter Gabriel. He used to be in Genesis, but this is his solo. Rare solo tour and Genesis again in fog. I don't think Bill Collins is feeling that well, so I don't think he did a he did like a tour a few years ago, but he wasn't well enough to play drums the whole time. I don't know what, what's going on with him, but hope he feels better. Um, here is The Who live at Chicago's House of Blues in 1999. That's a band that keeps on going. Very simple <laughs> record labels. Double, double disc here. Lots of great songs on that one. From Chicago's House of Blues. Um, and here's The Who, Sparks to the Blind. This is them, I believe, uh, recorded at Woodstock part of the time. And then Georgetown University. There's a DVD and CD. And it sparks to the blonde. You don't see this one every day. Very cool stuff. All right, let's move on. You guys, Paul McCartney fans? Well, Paul McCartney's had a lot of unreleased music. This is called Cold Cuts. And it's uh, no baloney. It has uh, all these songs I've never heard before. Love for You, Mike Connor. Paul McCartney import. And uh, it's just about 1996. I'm not sure if that's what it was recorded or packaged. Here is the Beatles live up on the roof. This is Get Back. Get Back recordings. And um, what else do we got here? Beatles Get Back to Abbey Road. A lot of unreleased recordings. Pretty nice stuff. From Abbey Road and Let It Be Sessions. All right. Um, this one is uh, Paul McCartney 2. It's his second 
solo album, but what's really cool about it is there's a bonus CD that you don't get on the original release. A full bonus audio. So Paul McCartney, too, he plays every single instrument on this one. Um, here is an album called Beatles Revolutions, another rare Beatles album. And some of the songs are repeated, but they're different different takes of them from the White Album. And here's the Up on the Roof album again, the Digipack. Paul McCartney's performance of Desert Trip. He does uh, Day in the Life with Neil Young on here. It's, been a, it's a great highlight. They were friends in real life. Uh, I was actually at this show. There were tens of thousands of people there in India over at Coachella. It was amazing performance. Neil Young had opened for Paul McCartney that night. And then they had The Who, Roger Waters from Pink Floyd, Bob Dylan, and the Rolling Stones. You can't beat that line, huh? Uh, Paul McCartney, the interviews that was uh, Best Buy bonus disc. Really cool stuff here, guys. Uh, he goes and does interviews, I guess, about every song on the Run Double Run album from the late 90s. These are all like remix, uh, re retakes of his favorite songs. Um, the um, DJ Selene is saying hi to Hedy Cordona. Thank you and welcome. Do you recognize this album? This is a Paul McCartney um, album. And um, Liverpool Sound College. <laughs> you never know where you find Paul McCartney albums. Um, this is Rare Tracks. I believe I'm giving this one away. If you want to um, enter the contest, you will. Uh, all you have to do is go to my last giveaway one a, a couple of videos ago. Just make a comment, and you could be entered in to win this rare Beatles album. Yeah, we'll be giving more stuff away, too. This is really nice because it's a um, two albums on one and it includes extra bonus tracks. Beatles for Sale and Rubber Soul, all on one disc. And it's an import. It was made in Russia. Russia used to outlaw rock and roll in kind of communism. But now they are able to come out of the closet and... and uh, get involved with rock shows and tours and all this cool stuff. Um, let's see. Do you remember, um, I did a video about this. Um, does any of these members here look not familiar? This is John, Paul, George, and Jimmy. That's right, Jimmy Nichols. There he is over here. So, Jimmy Nichols was with the Beatles for about 13 days. He was considered the fifth Beatles. He toured with them when Ringo was ill. And this is the Beatles tapes, uh, interviews back in 1964. And we got John, Paul, George, and Jimmy, right? Jimmy Nichols. Actually, Jimmy Nichols uh, faked his death. Oh, lots of stuff going on with him, so... The, uh, I recommend you watch that video to find out about the fifth Beatle. All right. Uh, what else do we have going on here? We've got an album called Abracadabra. Let me guess who put out this album. Yes, it's the Beatles. Includes the fabulous Yellow Submarine and Eleanor Rigby. These are all... Um, Alternate tracks and release tracks by the Beatles. You know, you've probably heard the songs before, but you've never heard them that way before. Here's some Aerosmith live in Newcastle, 1994, double album. Aerosmith is great live. Um, what else do we got here? We've got Aerosmith is sort just sorted enough, but. Um, that's a live album from, I believe, the 70s, yeah, 1978. Uh, here's another Aerosmith album. 
1993. And this is reported at the Pacific Amphitheater in Costa Mesa, California. Jimi Hendrix experienced the Peel se Session. He does Radio One theme, Gay Tripper, Spanish Castle Magic, Wait Until Tomorrow. Uh, this man has put out so many albums posthumously. It's just a wealth of world of music. It takes a lifetime to listen to all of it. It's another Jimi Hendrix album, double album, with rare recordings. Jimi Hendrix Fire. Jimi Hendrix, the McLaughlin Sessions, 1969. This is recorded with John McLaughlin, who kind of modeled his career after Jimi Hendrix. Really rare and great album, nicely recorded. Here's Jimi Hendrix Experience live in Paris, 1968, live in Paris. Very cool. I think this one was in a official release, but it was in very rare. It's out of print right now. It was released by the Hendrix. LLC, and it's just a, it might have just been available on internet purchases or something like that. Um, what else we got? Jimi Hendrix Live at Woburn. Very cool. And Jimi Hendrix Broadcasts. That's a cool broadcast. And what else we got here? We've got Eruption. If you're a Van Halen fan, you're going to love this because it's like their songs remixed into like a dance, current contemporary dance music. So it's actually them playing it, but they remix the sound. So it sounds like house music. They do all the great hits like uh, Game is Crying, Dance the Night Away, uh, Panama, even Eruption, Pretty Woman, all these cool songs really got me. Dance medley of Van Halen songs. You don't see that one every day. Um, Van Halen, I believe, got to start in the mid 70s. Uh, when they got their first record album, that was, uh, they performed in Magic Mountain, Valencia, California. And they were playing songs mostly from their first album, but they also played some songs that were released years later on to other albums. This is Van Halen at Magic Mountain, 1977. Imagine going to see them. Uh, if you go to YouTube and look up where Van Halen, you'll see tons of stuff because there's not a lot of live stuff that David Lee Roth um, during that seven-year period. So you got to kind of find alternate recordings. This is a Rod Stewart and Faces for BBC, too drunk for the BBC. And you had these two twins, almost Ron Wood and Rod Stewart. I think Ron Wood got kind of upset with Rod Stewart, got upset with Ron Wood for leaving the faces there to join the Rolling Stones in the mid 70s. And here is Paul McCartney live in Oslo. It's a double album doing all. It's great songs, and this was back in 2004. This one is a really interesting album. It's called Twin Freaks, and Paul McCartney uh, with a famous DJ called Freelance Hellraiser, and they were able to remix his songs. Those songs like Live and Let Die, you know, remixed by a famous DJ. And here is Apollonia from Apollonia 6. And this is a Japanese string chord that has a lot of extra songs like Manic Monday that Prince eventually wrote and gave to the Bengals. But before that, he let Vanity and Apollonia have a thing at it. So they had uh, recorded versions as well. All right. Well, we are coming up on an hour and 49 minutos. I do have one more box of CDs to go through, but I want to put these away so I don't have too many things sitting out. It gets a little artistic and kind of all over the place. So give me a moment to kind of regroup, and we will look at our final 
CD box for the day. Uh, don't worry, guys. I got a lot more stuff to show you, a lot more collectibles. I guess that's why I don't mind being sequestered in my home. I have so many cool stuff to look at and uh, play. So, you know, it's just been really, really fun reminiscing with you all. Thank you guys for coming. And uh, give me a minute. I'll be right back. I'm going to find a few more pieces of memorabilia to share with you. Okay, I'm making my way back into the fold here. And we still have some dedicated followers here, viewers, I should say, um, that are here. And is that DJ Sawyer? Yes, that's wanting to say hi. How much longer are you going to do this live stream? Well, I got probably another 20 minutes or so because I got to go through this box. Oh. <laughs> have a project. Yeah, I have actually a program here. I should post my agenda. What happens here? I don't get that. I know. That's what I don't get it either. Yes, it has to keep the chat going. And then I think I have to go to another meeting. Really, what time are you done with your meeting? Oh, I, I, you started right now because I keep getting a message from that. I told you I was going to talk about Oh, okay. Thanks. Because sometimes we get phone calls and. We don't want to interrupt the flow of the stream, but thank you. All righty, who else is here? Okay, very good. We got a few more people here. All right, we got a couple more. Um, well, not a couple more. I got a whole box full of uh, CDs for you guys to, to take a gander at. Um, this is a guy named Levon Helm. He was in the group called The Dad. It's kind of hard finding his CDs. Uh, this is out of print. And it was recorded back in the 1980s. And he even has a bonus track called Summertime Blues that was previously unreleased. So, that's pretty cool. Levon Helm, one of the great drummers and singers. Um, this is Robbie Robertson's latest album. It's called Cinematic. And it has a song on there called Once Were Brothers. And he made a movie with the same... It's all about the history of the bands and moving to go back and you really feel like you're back there. And it's told from Robbie Robertson's perspective of what went on. This was their first album, music from Big Pink, and they really had a great, um, you know, the basement tapes of Bob Dylan. And this is, Bob Dylan actually drew this picture, the first album. And it was really, uh, Interesting to hear all the things that were going on behind the scenes there. Oh, th I'm glad I bought this one. I wasn't sure if I got it, but it was Bob Dylan, Things Have Changed, live. And to make you feel my love live, my love live, can't wait live. Demonstration not for sale. So it's kind of hard to find. It was released by Columbia, but it's a limited release. It's probably... Uh, promo only just for the disc jockeys. 
Uh, I did a whole video on Bob Dylan's 1966 tour when he got booed off stage because he was making the transition from folk music to electric music. You want to see that one? And you can actually hear the concert on here from the Bootleg series. This is an official release they call it the Bootleg series and the Footprint with it. Excellent series. Um, and it shows, it's a, you know, his songs. It was really a musical revolution. And I don't know why people were, it took so long for them to catch on, but they were great. Here's some legendary Bob Dylan performances. Um, Johnny Cash show, World of John Hammond, and also Saturday Night Live, 1979, when he did Gotta Serve Somebody, I Believe in You, When You're Gonna Wake Up, and the Slow Train Coming album. He even has songs from David Letterman's show in 1984, and it has the Grammy Awards, and won Best Rock Vocalist in 1980, for Gotta Serve Somebody. Man, I serve somebody. Um, here is Transmissions. And this is also a lot of like TV show performances, some different uh, things that were not included on that other CD package. So, uh, yeah, Bob Dylan, amazing. He's been in the business for like also about 58 years and putting out a new album this month. No sign of slowing down. He had his first number one single, it was 17 minutes long. I actually did a video on that. Um, look at this one, Eric Clapton, double album, live album from 1990-91, live at Royal Albert Hall with a lot of his great songs. What an excellent guitarist and vocalist and songwriter, Eric Clapton. Sorry to see that he has retired, but once in a while he does a performance and uh, he had a movie called, I think it's called 12 Bar Blues, which I have to watch it. It's a documentary about it. Life. Um, in the 70s, when Bob Dylan and Cheap Trick were putting out the Budokan albums, Eric Clapton joined in. And Budokan has such a great acoustic sound system. This is a nice album with a lot of his greatest hits. Um, Eric Clapton, Just One Night. Really, really nice stuff. I have it on vinyl. I used to listen to it a lot on vinyl. And here's Eric Clapton live. The Mosque in Richmond, Virginia, 1979. Well recorded album. Imported. And here's another one. Uh, Winton Marcellus and Eric Clapton doing Play in the Blues. It's on a different record label. Yeah, he does songs like Layla and uh, The Last Time, but it's just a really nice recording. Lincoln Center, 2011. Eric Clapton shows his versatility. Here's another one called Another Ticket. It was a hit single, I Can't Stand It, on this one. Rita May, Catch Me If You Can. Love this album, remember when it came out. Another album from the 1980s, Money and Cigarette. Look at he's ironing his guitar and it's kind of, you can see it's kind of, looks like it's, the heat is making it uh, melt or something. Interesting concept. I got a rock and roll heart. Here's an Eric Clapton related album. He had so much influence on other people's music and performing on their albums. He's on this one. Uh, TDF Retail Therapy. Uh, he was in a great band called Green, and this is the alternative album. A lot of these are recorded in London or all alternative tracks. And it's from the, I think it's from his first couple of albums uh, with Cream back in the 60s. Let's see what else we got. Um, we got recently lost uh, Jack Bruce, one of the great drummers of all time. He's in Cream and Blonde Faith. Uh, what's nice about this album is it has Ginger Baker, who's the lead vocalist of Queen, and it has bonus tracks. The whole album bonus tracks that are included on the original. So, again, I don't want to buy something that's incomplete. I try to get the complete deluxe recordings when I buy this stuff. Here's Roger Daltrey's uh, latest album. 
got pretty good reviews. It could almost have been a Who album because Keith Townsend is on a lot of the songs playing guitar, and I think he might have written some of them as well. So it almost could be considered a Who album, but it's really Roger Daltrey solo. And Pete Townsend claims he's just torn because Roger Daltrey loves it so much, but he's not. He looks like he's having a good time anyway. Best of Rockers and Ballads, Roger Daltrey. This is the greatest hits album, but it is from. It's an import, so I'm going to say it's from England, possibly. Roger Daltrey's greatest hits. And another album that's really hard to find is Roger Daltrey Gold, a lot of his great hits on a double CD. I don't know why this one is put out of print. It's an amazing record. And here is, I think, Roger Daltrey's latest release, which is Tommy. But it's orchestral. It came out in 2019. Was the whole Tommy album with the orchestra. It sounds great. The voice is still awesome. All those years. Here's the Who Live in New York, DVD 2006. And then class of 55. I remember the Million Dollar Quartet with Elvis, Roy Orbison, Carl Perkins. I'm sorry, uh, Jerry Lee Lewis. Johnny Cash, Elvis, well, Roy Orbison jumps in on this album. Basically, uh, to take over for Elvis there. The only one that's still alive, the last man standing, is Jerry Lee Lewis. He's in his 90s right now and wishing all the best. He hasn't released anything in a while, but I'd love to hear him play. I got to see him play about maybe 12 years ago. Uh, when he was releasing some of those duet albums. He's still amazing, amazing, uh, great singer, songwriter. John Entwistle from The Who. This is a, he released a lot of solo albums. He's one of the last ones. And it does have uh, bonus tracks as well. Uh, here's another John Entwistle, Rigor Mortis sets in. This is the actual Rhythm Mortis album. He had a dark sense of humor. I'm going to pull up some more John Entwistle stuff right now. And I first bought this one. It was called uh, Too Late to Hero. John Entwistle. Then I realized that there's some bonus tracks on this one, so I had to buy this one as well. You don't want to be missing any songs. Okay, let's see. I'll look at a few more John Entwistle. This is his first solo album called Smash Your Head Against the Wall. It's out of print. And the great thing about this is it has uh, nine bonus tracks, including the Neil Young song, Cinnamon Girl. Demos and previously unreleased songs. Really cool. Smash your head against the wall, John Entwistle. Uh, let's see. There's another John Entwistle from the Who, one of the greatest bass players of all time. Mad Dogs, and it includes two songs that were not on the original album. Okay, let's see what else we got here. This is a nice album. It's called Whistle Rhymes. It also has four. Um, Previously unreleased songs. Charlie Trissel, Whistle Rides. Really underrated. He was such a great singer and played horns and bass. He's multi instrumentalist. That's the John Entwistle here. He also joined the All Star Band for a couple of years with Big Star, but he did his own tour. This is Left for Live. He saw a Left for Dead earlier album by. Crazy Horse, this is the complete live performance. There's a version of it that only contains half of it. If you get it, get this one, the deluxe version, and that's the whole concert. It is uh, recorded probably in the late 90s, I guess. John Entwistle Band. 
Here is live from the front row. It's a DVD audio recording. He does some of his own songs and some new songs. And here is John Entrus of King Biscuit Flower Hour. And that was uh, a radio show where he did a live concert of, again, a lot of the great songs that my wife has even been interviewed with. It was probably his most popular song, of course, The Spider, which he wrote in only about hmm, 12 minutes or something like that. And the most famous song. Fortunately, that song has been retired. No one can sing it like John. Um, let's look at a, uh, another solo album from The Who. This album is, is Keith Moon, Two Sides of the Moon. And he loves the um, Beach Boys. So he does a lot of Beach Boys songs on here. But uh, he has a radio spot with a Ringo Star. Couple songs of window. He didn't really play drums on this album very much. It was just mostly him singing. It would have been nice if he had played drums on it. But uh, Two Sides of the Moon and with a bunch of extra songs. It's also kind of hard to find. Uh, Keith Moon, one of the greatest drummers. You know, the Who has like some of the greatest musicians, greatest, one of the greatest singers, Roger Daltrey, one of the greatest guitar players and songwriters, and vocalists. Pete Townsend, and you have John H. Russell, greatest bass player, and one of the greatest uh, drummers. Look at this album. This is Pete Townsend, um, All the Best Cowboys Have Chinese Eyes. And that's because he's squinting at his cowboy here. He's referring to Clint Eastwood, the last squinting. <laughs> this is one of my favorite uh, albums of his. It was pretty much going over his divorce. 1982. Kind of sad there. Um, here is his first album called Who Came First. Nice thing about this, also it has like a, uh, six bonus tracks. Pete Townsend, Who Came First. And uh, let's take a look at this one, The Who Live at Full. Some people think that uh, this was even better than Live at Leeds. Similar set, almost the same set. Let me be the judge. Excellent recordings there. Um, this is the Wizard of Oz in concert and it includes um, Roger Daltrey. I think he played the Tin Man. Or do you play that? Scarecrow. Has Jackson Brown, Roger Daltrey, I think. Plays, if I only had a brain. That is, uh, he must have been a scarecrow then, because the scarecrow didn't have a brain. Uh, let's see. The Who. We saw this. Oh, we haven't seen this one. This is it. Can anybody, anybody out there play drums? And it's live in San Francisco at the Cal Palace double album. This is actually uh, Keith Moon takes. A lot of alcohol and horse tranquilizers and passes out towards the second set. And you can even hear them playing See Me Feel Me without the drummer. And then they have to audition a drummer in the audience. Some guy comes up and plays. And it's Scott, Scott Alfred plays drums. It's kind of an interesting recording. I, I've never really heard of a person passing out and then pulling an audience member up to replace them. He did a pretty nice job with it. This one is the collector's edition of the Who's Next. And it has some extra songs and it has a stereo recording. I guess the album for some reason wasn't recorded in stereo. So they may have re-released it now in stereo, but this does have a few extra songs and alternate versions of songs from the album, so it is worth while hearing. Uh, this is the Who's latest album. I know they're going to be working on another one, but this again is the Target version, so it comes with three extra songs. And I heard that, um, 
Daltrey was a little upset with Keith Townsend for releasing this because he wanted, he didn't feel, he felt those songs were outtakes. So he didn't belong on the album. But, like I said, I have to play this. I want to see all this stuff. And then, let's see. Okay, well, um, what else do we have going on here? Got a couple more. Um, this is The Who, Old England, New England, Massachusetts radio broadcast in 1870. We do a lot of songs from Tommy album. We used to start out saying, please be quiet, have some respect, this is a bleak and opera. <laughs> Tommy, he sounds like a kind of guy. He is a kind of guy. Roger Daltrey, uh, I think I've shown this one before, uh, live in Massachusetts. I believe they got the year wrong. They, they said 89. I'm, I'm thinking it's one of 85 after this Under a Raging Moon album came out. And we were talking about Who's Next. This is the Who's Next Deluxe album. And it has a whole extra disc of songs on it. Unre previously unreleased. So. I think there's even another one that has another, I don't know, they keep releasing this thing. But uh, nonetheless, it is very, very cool. Um, we were mentioning Roy Orbison. He has an eight octave range. He's one of Elvis Presley's favorite singers of all time. And uh, this is one of his last albums. I think it was released posthumously back in 1992. He does the song Drove All Night that uh, Celine Dion put on one of her albums. This one was uh, his comeback album, Mystery Girl, has You Got It and some other really great songs. It's a shame he died of a heart attack. I think he was only in his 50s or something. And, uh, he's having a comeback. Great, great artist. Here's um, one of Roy Orbison's um, greatest six albums. And here is an album called Roy Orbison, Black and White Night. They made a movie with that. It had um, Bruce Springsteen joined them, Jackson Brown, Bonnie Raitt, Elvis Costello. This was at the Coconut Grove. That was where RFK, Robert Kennedy, was assassinated. They made a school out of it called Robert Kennedy uh, High School. And they still kept up the... Uh, Coconut Grove, you know, they made it into an auditorium. It's no longer a new club, but it's a uh, really did a nice job of keeping it up. They don't allow any eating or drinking in there. And it is just beautiful. Uh, Coconut Grove. And that was uh, 1989 from the Black and White Night. The whole concert is recorded from the Black and White. It does a lot of his great hits. Like Pretty Woman. That's right. Well, I was hoping that um, I was hoping that Janella Spice would come along, but I didn't see her today. So I'm going to show her favorite movie called Spice World by the Spice Girls. So I'll be watching it. It's going to be one day. Ah. Anyway, I really appreciate all of you here joining us. That's right, buddy. You guys, and I would do it. And um, I hope you enjoyed looking at all the rare CDs and memorabilia. I got a lot of cleaning up to do. I got to reorganize this room and put stuff back. So um, this is DJ Jerry reminding you all to keep on rocking. And now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. M I C, see you real soon. K E Y, why? Because we like you. M O U S C, thank you, DJ Soleil, for dressing up as Minnie Mouse. If you didn't get a chance to see that rare appearance, I do have a photograph of her. And I'm going to try to 
put it up as the thumbnail eventually. I'll switch it out for the one we have here. Uh, it was thematic music, thematic dress day at her school, and she is the, the most fun teacher I've ever seen. <laughs> Can't imagine my teacher dressing up like many men. But anyway, um, thank you, DJ Slaney, for coming on. She's in a uh, Zoom meeting right now. So uh, hopefully we will uh, get a chance to collaborate more later. Thank you all for watching. Remember, I love you. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a great day. Peace and love to everyone. Keep up the faith. We could make tomorrow a better day than today. And it all starts with that man and woman in the mirror. There we go. Let's see what we can do in this world. In this place. All right. Bye bye, everybody. Take care.